they really love black women and understand black women more than I thought. So I was really heartened by that. Have you talked to men in depth yet? And what are you learning from them? Because and, and you're right. You're absolutely 100% right. I I know that black men love black women. I just think that a lot of men feel they think that we're aggressive, but it's just we're just, you know, we're passionate. It's not aggression. It's not, right. we're not we're not angry black women. We're just passionate. That's our culture. Like that's just us. So right. That's why a lot of times they do go outside of our race. They kind of want that softer, that more feminine, because they feel like we are, you know, we doing too much all the time. That's just a, a, a false narrative that right. we have. We we have the love to give. We're just, we just, well, you know, we just, black yeah. people just all that. Hey, everyone. Let's start healing. I'm Adrian Murchison, and welcome to episode 131 of the Let's Start Healing podcast. We have more in common than we think, and what we have in common can change the world. And this episode today is talking about love, love, love in the month of love, February. And my guest is Lynn Williams, the host of Clocking with Lynn. It is a dating relationship podcast. And Lynn is a certified matchmaker or becoming a certified matchmaker. And uh, she's got a lot to say. She is on a mission to help women find love. So that means she's on a mission to help men find love too. As I said, she's got a lot to say, and we are going to get right to it. And there will be more to come on love, love, love in the month of love. There will be more to come in the coming episodes. I want to remind you to listen to Let's Start Healing wherever you get your podcasts. That is on Spotify, iHeart, Apple podcast and YouTube. Uh, my last episode was a really, really nice one uh, that was dear to my heart. Please check it out. That was episode 130 with my nephew, Christian, who is on a spiritual journey. And he is only almost 17 years old. He turned 17 this month. Very, very interesting episode. He is a deep dude. So let's get to Lynn. Remember, we have more in common than we think. What we have in common can change the world. Again, share Let's Start Healing with at least one person that you know. That is something that I like to convey to you and ask you to do for me. Let's get to it. Let's meet Lynn and let's start healing. Welcome, Lynn. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Adrian. I'm so happy to be here. I am so excited that you are here. Thank you so much for being here. And you know what? I I want to talk about your podcast, but something just came to me. Look, you are so natural on your podcast. Have you done this before? You have a podcast. Please share what it is. Have you done this before? You know, describe your excitement around what you're doing and what you're bringing to the podcast space. Thank you. Um, No, this, this is my first podcast, but I was just so passionate about like black love and bringing us together. I feel like we've gone into this thing where our community is really against each other, men versus women, men versus women. And I was just like, you know what? I'm not going to stand in that. I'm not going to accept that. I'm not going to, um, get behind that at all. So that was one reason why I was just like, I I want to get certified as a matchmaker because I want to bring that black love back because it is awesome. Like, you know, when our grandparents was married for 30 years and just had each other's back is, and I, and I was trying, I, I just felt like I hate looking at these watching, I'm watching a lot of podcasts and just seeing just the divide. And it yeah. just didn't feel good to me. It was just icky. It's an icky feel for me. So I was just like, I want to be that person that have the voice to bring that positive feel like all of that back, the black love and the unity and 
we love each other, you know? Yes, so yes, yes. That's what really motivated me to um, do the uh, my podcast, which is Clock In With Lynn, because I just, I love love. I believe in love and I, I'm just, I'm doing everything <laughs> possible to make sure that, honey, we get all yes. love because we deserve it. We right. deserve love, you know? Right, right, um, right. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. You know, so I think I've commented um, that I wrote a book years ago uh, and a nonfiction book on relationships with black okay. men and women between mm-hmm. black men and women. So I interviewed men and women about how they feel in their relationships, expectations, experiences, yada, yada, yada. One thing that surprised me, and I'm wondering if this is what you think or you're learning. One thing that surprised me with men is that they really do love black women. You know, like I, I was surprised by the depth of the love despite the conflicts that we can have, you know, between each other. Like, you know, they really love Black women and understand Black women more than I thought. So I was really heartened by that. Have you talked to men in depth yet? And what are you learning from them? Because, and, and you're right. You're absolutely 100% right. I I know that Black men love Black women. And um, I just think that a lot of men feel that Black women are aggressive. They, they think that we're aggressive, but it's just, we're just, you know, we're passionate. It's not aggression. It's not, right. we're not, we're not angry Black women. We're just passionate. That's our culture. Like, that's just us. So right. um, I feel that they're, that's why a lot of times they do go outside of our race. They kind of want that softer, that more feminine because they feel like we are, you know, we doing too much all the time, which um, that's just a, that's just a, a false narrative that right. we have. And that's why I want to be, a, I, that's why I, I want to be a part of positive really showing, you know, showing like we really just, we, we, we have the love to give. We're just, we just, well, you know, we just, black yeah. people just all that, you know. So <laughs> I don't, um, I know that I know that at the end of the day, I know that they love us. It's just what I'm saying. I just want to, I want to um, bridge, like, get figure out how to bring the you the the unity back together. Yes, yes, because, yes. because it's there. They, yeah, girl, that, the love is there. That's why I said I'm not turning. I'm not turning my back on us. I'm not doing it because not, I know yeah. it in us we do. Yeah, and we so do. you want to be a voice for not just the talking about the differences that we might see on other platforms and other conversations, but highlighting the positive and the love. Is that is that what you're saying? Absolutely. Yeah, I want to show like the positive side that we are not against each other. This is not a war. Yeah, this is not a war. Everyone at the end of the day, everybody wants to be loved. Everybody wants to be respected. So mm-hmm. I want to show that positive that positive side because it's yeah. there. So at what, point, at what point did you decide this is what I am going to do? This is what I want to have a platform on and talk about. Yeah, um, Adrian, I'm in an organization. I'm in a, a sorority that we have what over three thir- three hundred thousand women. And I am around, I'm around so many beautiful, dope women. And there's so many that are single and there's so many that's kind of discouraged. They're basically like, oh, I'm going to go have a baby on my own. I'm just going to be single. And I'm just like, there's like, there's a need here. So that is what made me even being around in the organizations that we were, you know, like even, um, um, the, when ignite. We the, the ignite i was just like it's so many dope women that they just like get, they're giving up on love they're just like and i'm just like no we're not doing that so that is what one day i was i was home and i'm just like i really want to get myself certified to become a matchmaker because i know that there's it's, it's, it's somebody for everybody so I I knew just seeing and being around so many women that were single that I just was like, there's a need. And that's why I came right. up with. Um, right. Well, one, I did not know that there was a certification in matchmaking. That is wonderful. 
Yeah. I didn't know that. Is that how extensive is that? Do you you take a test or yeah, yeah, yeah. you um it's just courses. It's kind of okay. like anything like you're getting licensed for. It's just cool. I took classes and um mm -hmm. yeah, the same thing. You just you take your classes and all of that and you just learn about it. And and this is the thing too. Every other culture, they're big on matchmaking, meaning that you know how they 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 have families like where they introducing their kids to these other families. Like we're the only culture that we don't do that. Right. Like they know when they go to college, like you need to go, you know, meet your husband in college and all of that stuff. But every other culture is into it as yeah. far as arrangements and, um, and putting people in the positions to meet and have those type of, you know, well, we don't do that. And I'm just like, there's a need. And then I'm not going to go get it because it is. And even though I'm, I'm all for, you know, love is love. I, even if you want to date outside your race, I just feel like, I feel like there's just, we, we've just been missing in that situation. And a lot of times, and, and let me just tell you this, even when I was studying the whole uh, matchmaking thing, they said we are the least matched. Like we're the least desired. We're the least, and I'm just like. Meaning, meaning women, black, black women, women. Black women. Yeah. Yes. Like we're the least desired. And, we're, and I'm like, you can't get no more exotic than a black woman. So stop playing with me. You know? So I was just like, come on, let's like, I'm not laying down with this. Yeah. It, I know <laughs> that we fly. Yeah. I know that's why we and dope we are. So what, what is so, what, what is so, what is really coming out for me is how I think part of that is that men out in the world they have to deal with whatever they, whatever they have to deal with out, you know, out in the workplace, black men, right? Mm -hmm, so they mm -hmm. come home and they, they want to be relieved of that stress, you know, and be stand in who they are and be loved and valued. Right. And then we go out as black women and we have to stand up for ourselves and we go through what we go through. We, we are constantly fighting for our truth, you know, fighting for our value and, and, and love. And so when we come home, we don't want to diminish ourselves in any way and should not diminish ourselves in any way. And I think that that's where there can be a rub. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like we come home, we're still, we want to stand in our truth 24 mm seven. -hmm. And that might, that might clash with a man's needs and, you know, I don't know what to do about that. <laughs> and, and, and <laughs> I don't sadly, know what to do about it. And sadly, it's kind of set up like that. We're designed like that. Women are yeah. like, I think they weaken our men and they make us stronger. So it's like, it's a flip-flop thing. But even with, with uh, my matchmaking business, I'm going to like, even work with women to soften it. Like, know like how to leave you, because I, I deal with a lot of like women that are bosses. So I want to really like get into where they, after, after five, you are a different person. You're not that boss. You know, when you come home, you have to be, you know, you have to be, you have to be that feminine. You have to be that person, that woman that is um, making them feel, you know, comfortable and all that stuff. But I, I, it, it's a lot. Like it's a lot. Like it's so and it, it's, it's so a lot. Much. It's so much. So um, yeah. But even with the <laughs> with 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 my matchmaking too, I just wanted to have it to where even I have um, life coaches where you're gonna talk. You can talk to life coaches to oh. deal with like trauma and it's it's just a lot that goes into it. Before you, you really deal with somebody, you really got to get yourself together. And, oh, absolutely. And you you have a program around mm -hmm. all of this right fitness okay. life coach get your hair right get your physical like all of that like it's a like i want it to be where you are a person that you would date yourself yes. i want you to be so amazing that you're like i like i'll date me because, <laughs> because you don't want to bring that all of that into a relationship because it's not going to work like that is this you know? for are you um planning this for uh, ages, a particular age group, 
or age range? Yes, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm doing, I want 30 and up. I don't, I don't believe in 20 year olds being married. Mm -hmm. I, just, I just feel like that age is a time for self development. I feel like it's like if you, you, you can be a man that come from the best family. You saw your mom and dad together. You 20 years old. You are not going to be with that one woman for the rest of your life. Like, come on, please, y'all. Like, it's not the reality. And you could be the most, you could be the nicest, the, the greatest guy. But 20 year old, you ain't going to be with, you're not going to be there with that one person until you 100. It's impossible. Right. And that's not a bad thing. I think the 20s is for self-development. After the third, that's why I'm only doing like 30 and up because that's when you're ready. I want you to get all that out of your system. Like get that out your system before you talk about being somebody's wife or husband. You know, like it yeah. doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. It's not like, it's crazy. I, when I graduated from college, I was in probably 15 weddings, only two still married. But oh they're God. young because it's, it's, it's your two. It's a lot to take on a whole nother person. You don't even know who you are at 20, 22, 20. You don't know yeah. who you are. One I'm so that person. One of my friends said something to me that I thought was so interesting because she is in her second marriage and we're older. Both of us, she and I are older and she was saying how in her first marriage, she and her now ex-husband, their communication wasn't, uh, it wasn't too bad for lack of a better word, because they were learning each other. They were growing. They were, they were teenagers, you know, they were under 20 when they first got together. And so they were growing up and learning their themselves and learning each other and figuring each other out. But now later in life, okay, she got married and she's saying that the communication is completely different. Then you have to learn how your partner communicates mm -hmm. and, you know, learn to compromise and learn what your values are, mm -hmm. which I thought was like, so I thought that was so true. It's so true. And, and interesting. But it's there's so still a rub there. I mean, there's still a rub in the communication and, you know, each other's wants and desires and communicating that. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's so true. It's so true because, like I said, I think that's just a time for self-development. And even if you're dating someone, I, I would just not put so many, like, restrictions on it. Like, if you, if something happens, like, they're going to, like, if they go and date other, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't. I just feel like that's just a time for yourself. Yes. Yes. And you're trying to figure it out because like I said, before you can be in any type of successful relationship, you got to get you right first. Right. And so how about you? Have you been in a long-term relationship and how does, how does your life work compared to I'm, what we're you, talking I'm about? you know, I'm divorced. <laughs> no, I don't know. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I was married. I was married to a doctor and I was a little immature in my relationship. Um, How long were you married? I was, we were together for 10 years, but married for six. So I divorced him in 2017. And this another, this is another thing that um, I use my experiences to do what I'm doing today. Because I know I was, I was immature. I was very spoiled. <laughs> very spoiled. It was my way on the, the highway. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. So I wasn't, I'm not. I'm not that person anymore. Um, and I've apologized to him. We're good friends to this yeah. day. I just saw him on Christmas Day. Um, but I, I sent him a long apology of, you know, of how I was a little, you know, I was a, I was a lot. But anyway, um, I um, use that experience. I'm, I'm using that experience to help other women. So people be like, oh, you're not even married. How are you going to tell somebody like or, or matchmaking? But the thing is this, it's all about what you've learned. I've always been in long term relationships, even before him. Every I've been in long term relationships since I was 17. I never had all, I've all, always dated someone at least three years or more in, in college. I was with my college sweetheart for five years. So um, I was engaged, engaged to him. So I'm using all of those experiences to help other women. Right. And um, and I know the pro like the process of 
just just you know just being more mature and, and understanding the whole thing of being with someone so yeah but yes I am I'm divorced like I said but we're really good friends and but he was a great guy I was just spoiled I was right. super spoiled um so yeah but I'm using well, that and we're we're good we're good to this day <laughs> and I love my stepkids I love my stepkids yeah. <laughs> Well, so this is a spiritual based podcast mm -hmm. and I want to talk a little bit about your spirituality and does that tie in with your work? Yes. Um, I grew up Christian, um, Baptist, um, and I do believe that I believe in God. I, it's a lot of things that I'm learning as I've gotten older that I'm not a little, um, it's a some things that I learned when I was younger I, is a little confusing for me now. I've never, I've never um, read the Bible before. So like never, ever, ever. Wow. Like, I mean, I would like do like, you know, we would do what, what is it we used to have? Um, like Sunday school, Sunday school and all of that. I would just, you know, those scriptures, yeah, yeah. Know, but i would never read, like some people read the Bible from, from the beginning to the end. end. I've never done that. So, um, I do believe in a higher power. I know for a fact there is. I have a great relationship with them. But like, I I talk to God all the time. Yeah, yeah. I'm and you're more, you're more like I can I consider myself. Uh, I know that I am more spiritual than I am religious. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you're you consider yourself more spiritual than religious. Yes, right? I would say that. And and like I said, to, to this day, I'm still trying to learn certain things because when you're growing up, you just go by what your parents say or what everybody say. Like you, that's what you, that's all you know. So I'm learning more things about all of that. But like I said, I, I do believe in a higher power. I know God is right here with me and he looks after me every single day. But yes, I, I do consider myself more spiritual than religious. I, yeah, I would say that. <laughs> no. Yeah, just your personality, I would imagine that you know you talk to God or you you talk right. to your higher power. Yeah, God like this. <laughs> yes. How would you describe that knowing? Is it a um uh something that you communicate within your heart and your thoughts, or how do you what how would you describe your knowing it of is, God and your higher power? It's a feeling for me, like I feel God. He's yeah. all inside of me. I could just, just right now, just sitting here, I get a chill just even saying it. Um, so it's a feeling for me. It's, it's all through me. <laughs> you know, it's, it's all through me. Um, but yes. Whew, I, think, yeah. I think that that is, you exemplify that because I always say that God is love right. and, and, and joy. God is love and joy. If we're feeling something different from that, we're not in that. It's not that we're not connected to God, but we're not like living and swimming in that space. Right. You know? And you just mm -hmm. exemplify that just by your natural state to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 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 God's everywhere. I, yeah. I got love and mm -hmm. peace. And, and, I, and I said, like, at the end of the day, just be kind and be good to people. Like, that's what God is. Like, because if you think about it, even like with some religion things, like a lot of religious things is violent and killing people over religion. Like, how is that God? You know what I'm saying? I do. Like, don't kill me because I'm a this or I'm a that. Like, that's when I'm like, that's not real. Like, that. I mean, I'm, I'm saying that that is, that can't be God. I know what you, you know? mean. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So, God is peace and love and kindness. Like, it's not... It can't be that hatred and because I'm this religion, you're the wrong religion. How is that God? Yes. You know what I'm I, saying? I agree. Yes, I do know what you're saying. Yeah, so it's, I not, know. it's crazy to me. Like, how do you say you're religious, but you're you're violent and you kill for the religion? Huh? Yeah. I'm, 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 that make sense. I, say that again. I say make that make sense. Killing yeah. because yeah. you're not this or I'm not that. Or like, how is that? How is that? I'm I, that's when I that's when I said like that part I don't understand that and that's just it doesn't make sense to me that's just like um the <laughs> for an example the um 
the people that kill abortion doctors because they're aborting kids, but yes. you kill the abortion. So it's right. the same thing. Or if you're for abortion, right. yeah. you're, you're against abortion, but you're for the death penalty but for you me. You kill the doctor yeah. that's doing the abortion. So I'm just yeah. like, I know y'all. Like, enough is enough. Yeah, like, it's, it's all uh, about love, peace, and kindness. And that's it. If that that's that's the it. I I agree. I'm I feel I don't want to say naive, but I feel something like I I'm just lost at this point in my life of understanding how we uh bomb and kill to solve our problems. Mm -hmm. you no, know, mm -hmm. to get to get I don't understand how that gets at the answer and that that is what we are still doing. Mm -hmm. I'm just I'm lost. It doesn't make sense. I'm not it that that is what we are still doing as human beings. Yeah. And it is going on to, to this day, like, but it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -mm. I agree. So when do you most feel the presence of God? When I wake when I wake up and open up my eyes, honey, and he then brought me another day. <laughs> <laughs> I have like that's my moment when we are connected as soon as I open these eyes in the morning. Yeah. Because everybody didn't make it. I have friends my age, young, lock, gone, died. Like, so every morning I thank him for giving me another day to do this. Mm -hmm. So I <laughs> yes, so I feel him. And like I said, I have I have a great relationship with God. And I'm so fortunate that I can feel him every day. So or her. Yes. Uh, so I just, I just love, I'm just in a really good space right now because I, I, I've been in, 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 there was times when I would, was going through things and depressed and not understanding, but I have such clarity right now. Yeah. And it's just a good feeling. My relationship with him is amazing. So yeah, girl, every day I wake up, that's <laughs> when it's feeling. I love that. Okay. All day, every day. <laughs> <laughs> and I am um, talking about your clarity. And I before we came online, I was asking you about a video that you had made back in November for social media. And we were on a lunch break from this final weekend of the program that we were part of. And what I remember you saying is I had to get this off my chest right now. And like, I'm just pouring out my guts. And would you speak to, if you're comfortable, what you were sharing and what your truth was? Um, That day, I remember after we were on the that Zoom, I remember saying like I had anxiety to work, like not anxiety. Um, I was pretty anxious to get it off my chest. And it was, it was. It was one of those moments where I'm like, I got to release this like now. And so I was just so. Whew, I was just so thankful to feel like. Clear, like like I said before, I ha I've been I've gone through some things where it, it wasn't so clear for me. And that day I was just like I had to share um, that experience that I was having because I knew that I couldn't keep it. I, I know I just knew I couldn't keep it inside. Yeah. Um, and just the fact that it was just crazy. I, I, I remember that day that and it's so, it's so funny that you asked it because now even me talking about, it, I'm like, I ain't going to cry on your show now, girl, but it was just so deep for me. And it was just so personal for me because like I said, I'm in a position, I've never been so clear and so happy in my space mm -hmm. that I'm in now. I've never had that. So it's just, it was just a joy to me to be able to express myself and to get it off my chest. And then, you know, it was a safe space because, you right. know, it was a very safe space. So that's why... Um, I, I went there and I just, I just poured yeah. my mouth out. Yeah. I just yeah. never before. You know, speaking of a safe space, that 
what what was really getting to me about in a beautiful way about the connection in that program is that everyone we, we're on social media, you know, for eight weeks or more. We're still on social media. Uh, mm -hmm. We're we're on Zooms, and people are sharing such personal things. People are uh, trying out. Uh, different techniques of motivational public speaking and or somebody might just post something about their day during that time and everything was met with love mm -hmm. and support and it really got me that you know this is this small bubble and then we can each go out to our own personal social media feeds and then see see something opposite of that. When we're so capable of giving this this kind of love all the time, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's it just it just really gets it gets me how we don't show up like that all the time. It was amazing, and um, I don't think I've ever experienced feeling that comfortable, which is crazy, right? I've I come from a family. I'm the I'm the youngest of five women. I have a huge family of a, like huge family, but I've never felt the the safety that I felt with with the you know the tribe that we had with um that with ignite, but um it was just awesome. Yeah, and yeah. It, it, it and it made you realize that there's people going through the same things you as the same stuff you going through it was just such a safe safe space like that was life changing for me actually like yeah. because i had just never felt that before and it's crazy yeah i'm saying it out loud but i never ever felt so safe before yeah yeah i definitely felt assured mm -hmm. i felt safe and assured like this mm -hmm. is safe. <laughs> no judgment. It was yeah. no judgment. Yeah. Because girl, I come from the real judgmental family. <laughs> like everything you do is wrong. <laughs> so it was mm -hmm. great to it was just a great feeling to yeah. feel that. Mm-hmm. Wow. And just, so, everybody's just um just being supportive. It was just great. It was a, it was yeah. an amazing experience. It was like, mm -hmm. like I said, it was life changing. You have you saying that you're one of five women. Five, so you have four sisters, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so did you grow up with both of your parents and I, your four I, sisters? I did. Well, my parents, they divorced um, when I was young. I was in third grade. Okay. Um, but they kept, neither one of them remarried. Uh, my dad got on drugs. Um, so they never, re, neither one of them remarried. So my dad was still around. Yeah. Um, for you know, holidays and things like that. I lost him in 2020. So we still had a really, really yeah. good relationship. I'm sorry. To, I'm sorry mm -hmm. about that. Um, but that's another thing too. I remember, because I was a daddy's girl. I remember the love of my parents when when he was, you know, not going through his illness. Um, I remember, I was telling the story the other day. I remember being in Dillard's department store and I remember my dad, he was, we were shopping for like school clothes. And I remember him having to use the phone at the, at the um, counter because he saw some pants he liked. And he called my mom and was like, what size do I wear? Like my mom used to run the household. So I'm just like, I just love my, like he gave, my dad gave his check to my mom and she ran the house. So she gave him his little allowance. So it's just like, I, I just really believe in that type of love. She made sure that everything was taken care of. My daddy wasn't good with money. So she was good at money. And um, she made sure that we was all fed, bills paid, everything. Everything's, you know, moving. She made the parts move. Right. So I just, again, I just believe in that type of um, love, you know? Yeah. So yeah. You know, I, that's, that's, why I'm not, that's, why, that's why I really, really want to get that type of love back. Right. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You've experienced it. You've seen it with your own eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When he, before, before his age, he got on the, the drugs, he was an amazing dad. Yeah. Like, I remember so many good things with my father, you know? 
just I was a daddy's girl. I remember he worked my my mom my mom worked during the day and he worked at night. So during the day, I was with him all day. So mm -hmm. how old was your dad when he passed? Um, he was my oh how old was daddy? Um, he was born in forty. He was born in forty two. Mm -hmm. My mom is eighty one. Mm. Little math, Adrian. Um, yes. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> but he, he passed in twenty twenty. Yeah. The pandemic. Um. So she's eighty one. So four years ago. Gotcha. He was exactly. in his seventies. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, so like I, 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 we still had a really good relationship, and he got he ended up getting off drugs, but I think he, he still had a hard time. I think losing his family and it was hard for him to shake it. Like even when I moved to LA, I moved to LA and when he did go through his um, hard time, my mom let him move back in the house in my old bedroom and let him get on his feet until, you know, she was like, you don't have to pay no bills. You don't have to do nothing. I just want you to get off drugs, do all of that. Like she, like my mom's silent. So that's what I'm saying. I just, I come from a world of, wonderful power like women that they just good right because she, she didn't want nothing to do with him like none of that but she was just like you come and she and he stayed with my mom for four years no didn't do any drugs the the moment that she said okay you should have enough money by now you just saved everything because she was the only thing he had to do was contribute to groceries but as soon as he left adrian girl he got back on drugs but those whole four years, he did nothing. Yeah. He had structure at, mm -hmm. at your mom's house. Yeah. 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 And my dad yeah. was awesome, too. It was just, you know, that was just yeah. a a bad little epidemic that, you know, how to crack yeah. in our neighborhood. That's a whole nother story. I, I get um, it. I get it. <laughs> So, yeah. uh, so before we go into how people can contact you, I want to ask you uh, one more question. Is mm -hmm. there a a time in your life where you experienced a miracle or a blessing where you said this was completely God and, you know, I had nothing to do with this that you're willing to share. Yes. I have a very good story for this. I had um, moved to LA. I came to LA. I'm originally from Arkansas, North Little Rock, Arkansas. Um, I came out here with $200. <laughs> I can't wait with $200, girl. That's that's something. But um, I had a friend that um I was staying with. Um, we were roommates, and I remember pulling up in front of the house. It was like rent time. She was only charging me five hundred dollars a month, which is nothing, especially in LA. I remember I'm like, I didn't I think my account was in the negative. And I pulled up to the house. I parked right in front of the, the mailbox and I'm just pouring, like I'm crying. Cause I'm just like, I got to go in here and tell her that I don't have rent. Um, I, I had no money. Like, like I said, my account was in the red and I'm just like, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Like, I don't, I don't know what else to do, but I just knew I didn't want to go home. I was just like, I got to figure this thing out. And I sat in my car, probably like an hour, just crying, just, just bawling and I get out the car and then I walk to the mailbox and this is when when I first moved here I was doing like extra work just you know on 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 um it sets and studios and stuff and I had done a like an extra job where it was um it was a commercial but, you know, we was getting paid like $50, $75, something like that. But they had bumped me I get, bumped me up to like a, um, I, I guess they call it like a day player or something. I can't remember. But anyway, I'm sitting in my car crying because I had to go in here and tell her I do not have her rent, which I feel like awful. And I go to the mailbox. But I, I can remember this like it was just today. I go to the mailbox. And there is a check for $1,500 that I didn't even know I was going to get. Like, they were like, yeah, we bumped you up. We did this, whatever. It's something I didn't even know. Like, 
I just, girl, I hit the ground. Like, I'm telling you, I literally was sitting in my car like, I have nothing right now. I can't even mm -hmm. eat today. And I got out of my car and because we had the mailbox that sit by the, the street. And I'm like, let me just pick up the mail and take the mail in here. And I had that check for $1,500 that I wasn't even expecting. Didn't even know. Like, it was crazy. I said, let me tell you something, God. Let me tell you something, fat girl, I, girl. So I was just like, oh my God. So I was able to pay her. I went into the grocery store. I was just like, you know what? Yes. You just have to just believe because yes. he is so real. He's so real. And he's answered so many of my prayers. Mm -hmm. you know, even when I felt like at my lowest, but he's real. Right. He's so and it's it's just a trip. It's just trippy when it's just, it's it's just my experience with him. Like I said, it's it's, it's just it's just good, girl. Right, just right. Good. That's but an yeah. awesome story, <laughs> and I can I can relate. I can relate, mm -hmm. and I think it's it's just you know if we just keep moving forward, you know, like no matter what we're feeling, no matter how discouraged, if we just just keep on moving forward, one step in front of the other. The blessings are gonna come. We're still in the we're still in the flow of receiving the blessings. Mm -hmm. And being yeah. positive, being a giver. I do know yes. that. I know being a giver is very powerful. It's yes. not like it's not take, 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 take. When you get into that giver spirit, yes. everything just flows. That gratitude, like thanking God just for just sitting here in this chair. Like thank him for everything. And I'm like it has been crazy good. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, crazy, like, but uh, this is in this all, it was all just new to this last few years. Is it's, I've got into that whole gratitude thing and it mm -hmm. is amazing. Yes. Yeah. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. Wow. Well, thank you for sharing that. And how can people reach you? Where can they find your podcast? If they want to get in touch with you about your business, how can they do that? Yes, um, my podcast is Clock In With Lynn, like right that I have on here. Um, YouTube, um, TikTok, Instagram, Instagram. My Instagram is Perfect Ten Lynn, and um, everything else is Clock In With Lynn. Yes, on okay. all platforms. They can send you a DM and you DMs Instagram. all of that. I'm getting a lot of them right now, so just keep them coming. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if you want to get matched, if you want to be matched. Come on, DM me. Also, I am a um, licensed real, real estate agent. So that's why I was telling my girls, honey, I can find you a man and a man child. <laughs> so, child. And, and how are your fees? How are your fees? Are they? Right now, well, right now for the females, I'm not charging the females right now because I want it to be where I'm getting um, um, more of like the database. So this is a good time to hop in with me until the fees be high. <laughs> so I oh, love it. Females, they can come on um, in, like I said, because I'm it's new. And then later, that the guys they will have a fee. But um, right now, I'm just trying to build like my database and things like that. But that would all be on um, on the my YouTube on YouTube. I have like all of that information. And they don't, they do not have to live in LA. Like you, you no. work in music across no, the no, 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 love is everywhere. <laughs> That's right. Your love is all over this place. Honey. That is right. That is so, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm very, yeah. very excited. I'm just, I'm just so thankful right now. Like I'm just in a, like I said, I'm just in a good space and I just want the love to just grow. I love what you're doing. I really, really love what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so this is going to be huge. This is a gift for everyone. And I see that I see you know, this is addressing black culture, but I see you this transcending to all cultures. I see your yeah, work. And, and, oh, let me just be clear about that because I don't want it to be where they think that I'm only matching. I'm matching everyone. Okay. I just, and the passion came from that because I believe in love. Like I, like I, my sister, she's married to a white man. So, um, I just. The passion came from that of my personal experience. Got you, got but you. But I'm matching everybody. Yes. So yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. And you know what? Is it okay for you to say what sorority you're a part of? I, I, 
I'm fine. Let's go today. It's Founders Day. Happy Founders Day, sir. <laughs> um, yeah, it's J J F January 15th, honey. We were founded today, January 15th, 1908. I'm a AKA, AKA Alpha 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 Incorporated, honey. All day pink and green, honey. Yes. <laughs> Congratulations. Y'all see my, cup. See my cup. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> well, yeah, I love my pink and green. <laughs> yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, thank you so much for doing this. This was awesome. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, thank you for the invite. Awesome, awesome. Uh, happy MLK Day, girl. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you for joining us. Remember, you can listen to all Let's Start Healing episodes wherever you get your podcasts. Please share Let's Start Healing with at least one person you know. And until next time, let's start healing. <laughs>